my name is Tulu Alade Somi. Thank you for joining me today. And uh, Mama is a program specially created for every mother and potential mothers. Indeed, the rest of the family are not left out, as everyone sure has one thing or the other to learn. Most mothers have had to lean on or glean from the experiences of others just to be able to perform their roles better. Women are always seeking to get better every time. This program will be designed to get women better informed about fertility, about pregnancy, about nursing and nurturing children, and our resource persons will help provide answers to the questions in the hearts of women in all of these areas. Each episode is designed to ensure that you live, love, learn, and laugh. Yes, mothers work so hard and give so much to everyone they deserve to be celebrated. Today, I have a very special guest with me in the studio of Wells Radio. And we will be discussing something crucial to the life of every woman. I would like to take a short break now as we listen to this anointed song by Tasha Cobbs. Break every chain. When we come back, I will introduce my guest and then we will look at that interesting topic. I'll be right back. Chain of condemnation and low self-esteem is broken in Jesus' name. Now, welcome back to your special program, Mama, on your preferred awesome radio. Thank you for joining us. We have in the studio today a very special woman, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, she's here to help educate women on building a healthy self-esteem. Yes, uh, she is Mrs. Tino Smith, a mother and the chief executive officer of Datina Designs Fashion House and Fashion School. She owns a franchise with Europa Groups, she manages Europa and Tibile fashion retail outlet stores all in Ibado. She has a burning passion for youth and women empowerment. Mrs. Tino Smith, you're welcome on this program. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Okay, Ma. So you're going to be sharing with me this morning uh, something that I've waited this long to ask you. I've watched you over the years. And I love the way you carry yourself. What's responsible for that? Uh, I, I believe one has to build self-confidence, even if you come from a family that is um, not well put together. I, because that's what we see all around. Some of us come from polygamous homes and everything like that. But you know, you work on self-development. Okay. You work on yourself. You believe in your dreams. You believe that you are worth something and to yourself and to someone else. So that's what I've built in myself since I've, I'm, uh, 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 when I was growing up. And I've always had that self-confidence in me. I believe I can, you know, do so many things. When, even when someone tells me you can't do that, I always say, there's nothing like that. I can always do all things to cry that strengthens me. So that has pushed me to where I am today. So I believe most of the time, uh, I just look at things and see, even the, the ones I feel I can't do, I just leave them and I say, I'll come back to it. I always talk to whatever it is facing me that I know that I can do this. Even at this point, if the ability is not there, I will build the strength and the ability, I'll come back and attack it and I'll definitely be able to overcome. So that's what has kept me all this while. That's kept, what has kept me going, being able to, you know, talk to myself and you know, build my self-esteem and tell myself that you can do so many things that even someone tells you, you can't do, you can actually do it. So that's what I tell myself. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. I believe you're already, uh, you know, going deep into the teaching for today. But let me ask you, what is self-esteem and why is it important in the life of a woman? I think self-esteem is about confidence in yourself, your self-worth. Your ability you know, to build yourself and um, be able to face whatever challenges comes your way. So I think it's about self-worth, knowing that you, know, you, you all, there are different voices we hear every day as we go about. We, we have we see negative things every day, you know, especially in Africa. Mm. We have things always, you know, you see depressive things every day, things that make you to feel, can I even ever get to this point in my life? But the point is, you speak to yourself, you look at what is inside of you, how God has made you, wired you, and believe that if I have this ability inside me, I can actually use it to, you know, do something, improve myself and improve others around me. So I believe it's about understanding your self-worth, that I'm, I'm, I'm important to myself, 
I'm important to my community. I'm important to everybody I come in contact with every day. When you see like that, that your life is not just going on its own, you have to, you know, take charge of your life. God has given you a life as a gift. Then you take charge of it. I believe that is that, that builds self confidence and it also brings you to the point of self esteem. Okay, thank you, Ma, for that response. But I'm, I'm just thinking right now, uh, for somebody like you, perhaps somebody said that to you, so perhaps somebody encouraged you and um, somebody spoke the right words to you that got you to this point. If you have a woman who isn't in that situation, perhaps everything she hears around her is negative, there's nobody encouraging, what do you say to that kind of woman? You know, I, I wouldn't say that I had that experience of people telling me, oh, you can cheer me, I mean, pushing me on, you can do it. I really didn't have that experience growing up, okay. not that much. So I would say that I looked at people that I could see achieving great things. Mm. Women, that when I was growing up, my mom was an example. She went through a lot, but I saw her fighting through, you know, being able to raise her children, ability. She was a serial entrepreneur, making, mm. trying to, you know, just make sure that everything meets up and she, her children are well educated and everything. So that gives me the confidence to know that even if I'm here seeing negative things around me, mm. I look at the positive ones, yeah. the women that are doing well. Even as grown up as I am, now I still look up to some women women in society that are doing exceptional things, that are not allowing things around them to you know, to bring them down. So when you are able to look at such women, it helps you to know that if they can do it, I can actually do it. There is nothing on you that I cannot do. So that helps you. So when I, if you're a woman out there and you are, you're always, you know, you're surrounded by negativity, people saying things to you, putting you down, you know, some people grow up in homes where have, even their fathers as women speak things to them that you, that would, the memories that you, you have to raise with the word of God as you grow up. So I, even when things like that happen, focus on the positive, focus on people that are doing well, focus on people that are showing you that there is a way, when there is a will, there is a way. When you keep doing that, are you... You know, block your eyes to other things that are negative. You find out that your path will always go in the direction you are focused on. Mm. There's, you know, they say focus creates blindness. Yes. When you're able to focus on the right things, you don't see all the negative, you know, negative things around you. So that's my advice to whoever, whatever they say to you, fill yourself with the word of God and let it help you to know that. Yeah, if you read the word of God, there's so many you know, things that are tells us that I can do all things through yes. Christ and strengthen me. When you say that to yourself every day. Whatever anybody says to you, the word of God overrides it. That's so that's really how I think any woman like that should handle it. That's awesome. I, I, I hope somebody heard that right there. You know, you can't afford to sit down and, you know, wallow in self-pity. Yeah. It's time to get up and be somebody. Be everything that God has created you to be. All right, Mrs. Smith, please. Uh, what are the signs of a healthy self-esteem and then that of a low self-esteem? Okay. People that have self, um, um, is, uh, I would say, like I said before, self-esteem is a sign of confidence, self-worth. Okay. So when you see someone that's able to, uh, that has a voice, that wants a voice to be heard, I'm, I'm not talking about people that are proud, mm -hmm. they always want to have their way, they want to be seen all the time, no. But somebody that has a message, and you, you, want to, you want your voice to be heard. I pray every day that, Lord, let me be a voice where somebody needs it. Like somebody now, we we're talking about you know, low self-esteem. A woman that has been battered as an abuse. Let me be a voice of hope for her. Mm. So what would be, well, I mean, build confidence is being able to find my voice, mm. being able to speak my truth, being able to stand out and say, this is who I am, and we are not ashamed to say so. So when you see people that can't say that, when they are always quiet, when they are always, you know, they can't speak their truth, they're always quiet, even when they are given the chance to speak, you see them, they're always withdrawn, they can't speak their truth, they're afraid to say anything, they're afraid of what people will think about them, they're comparing themselves with someone else. We always have different you know, levels of grace that God has given us, levels of ability, but when you are believing, the, 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 way, the way you are wired is different. When you are able to see that, you, you will be able to develop confidence in the gift God has given you. You will not compare yourself with someone else. So I believe the signs of low self-esteem is when somebody is not, they are withdrawn, they are not able to speak their truth, they are afraid, they, are, they don't have self-worth, they believe they are up, they don't measure up, they are always afraid, you know, of what people will think about them. So it's also the opposite for someone that has, I mean, a, a very high good esteem. You see the person is always confident, always speaking and truth, not afraid to speak anywhere, not afraid to voice out what she feels. And it's not about being proud, it's about being, you know, being able to understand who God has made you to be and created, created you to be. Wow, that is something there. Now, you know, you, you spoke about uh, a woman having a healthy self-esteem, mm -hmm. but sometimes things happen in life 
that make people lose this self-esteem? You know, what, what are some of those things that can be responsible? I think abuse is the first thing. Most, I mean, those are, that, one, that's one of the things that in Australia that is very high that we see all around. Women that have like, abused maybe when they were young, okay. or maybe like they've physical, been raped physically, okay. yeah. or even abuse. It's abuse it could be by words. words. Okay. By they've, they've been abused, they've been told that you can't amount to anything, mm. you are lazy, or maybe the child is exposed to, maybe he's not been doing well in school, the teacher is always talking down, telling him he's not, they're not smart. Or maybe even friends at school. Yeah, even friends, like laugh at him and you. Like we all always have a bullies in school and everything. Mm -hmm. With that too, we are always bullying and everything. So those things are making you drop, mm -hmm. and then you know, it develops in people. Like he doesn't have confidence in himself again. Just feels that like he can't do it. That feeling of I can't is always there. So those are things parents should look out for in, in children or their teenage children. That because if he's not taking care of, it, he also go. Yes, he's taking it. He can go it. And these things are be eating so well. If yes. he's not careful, you won't even know that the child is not. If you're not a vigilant parent or very you know observant, you don't you don't see these things. They could hide it and just go. Oh, it's just withdrawn. But it might be actually having issues with back pain with emotionally that like if we do not you know, take time to look to get the parents into battle to that girl it has really eaten deep and very hard to you know. so i think parents should look out for those things signs that you know children making sure we engage our children that's the, the, the important thing making sure we engage them at every level whether as children whether as teenagers whether even when they are single in their single life we should always engage and we have stories of people that go to school and commit suicide it is. it's because the, it might even have started as a child maybe mm -hmm. even a, a, as a, a child a baby could have gone like that going up and you wouldn't know so we need to engage them always make sure are you good are you happy are you you know you know let's engage them and have discussions with them we, we should not see them as they're too young to be spoken to yeah. we should always engage them at every age so as you engage them you you, you see how their mind works what they're thinking about and the ones that need to be corrected and the ones that need to be loved to really show that you are loved you are special you are you, know, you have to make them feel like that so it helps them to you know even if you're going through hard season they're going through hard time everything they're going through right now and they put everything they think they can put into it and it's still not working keep moving keep moving don't, don't that's what happens when people fall into depression because they just feel oh i don't know what i can do and it's still not working and that's the end and that's where our relationship with god also comes in. Yes. when we're able to work with god you know at those dark moments those are what keeps us going you know somebody's holding your hand you feel god holding your hand in those seasons you can cry, you can do whatever, it's your father, you can say whatever, and it takes you through the stormy seasons. And by the time you get to the other side, it will just make it a bit brighter. So, I want to encourage everybody guys to have those issues. That there are times that things don't work out financially, and at times that you put in all your best and everything really goes on. So, we have seasons, life and seasons, we have, you know, winter, summer, autumn things changes and that's how God has made it. Nothing goes straight and just keep going going no. You will even grow if things are like that. So if people go through financial issues, that doesn't mean that you should now lose your esteem because of that. Keep on being who you are. And at those moments I also believe it's time for growth. It's time to de develop yourself. When things are bad, that's when you learn how to grow better. Yes. When things are you know smooth probably we just relax and get enjoying the moment but when things are tough mm. that's when you grow you learn those things and when you get to the other side when things are now better when you look back you say oh okay you now see those things you learned that god wants to put it to you to use on the other side so whatever you're going through right now shouldn't even finances should not even you know mm. enough to bring us low mm. to the point where you know, I, I've seen people that have gone through things that when they're having financial crisis, they make wrong decisions and they go into wrong things because there's no confidence that God can do it or even in themselves that I'm trying my best and I know this will work out. So I think both needs to be fixed through trusting God and also believing in who God has made you to be. That like gift God has put inside of you. You can't do wrong. He couldn't have created you wrongly. Yes. He must have done. He has created the best image of you you can ever. And inside of you, are things that are wired inside yes. that He's expecting you to do. So whatever you're going to, you don't bring down your esteem. You mm. actually let you know that it's a season yes. to pass. And yes. at any pass, I will enter it and that season may be going to pass. Awesome. Thank you so much, man. You know, I actually feel like saying at this point that there's somebody who's listening to us right yeah. now who's um, actually considering suicide. Mm -hmm. Please don't. I mean, you absolutely have no need to go in that direction. The truth of the matter is that, you know, you're almost there. Mm -hmm. 
okay your light your 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 morning is almost here you know the darkest part of the night is when uh it's like the dawn yes so it's like you, you you feel right now like nothing is happening it doesn't even feel like there's going to be a way out but let me assure you that this season things are going to change in your favor in jesus name okay ma so let's quickly look at the third uh spring which is our physical looks <laughs> before we go into the, the next break yes so the slim people want to be on the big side and then you have who are the, who are the plus sizes who want to be slim okay yeah. so <laughs> Uh, Would women ever be able to get over that? Uh, I think that is an issue we always, <laughs> we always have for life. I think all because it just comes back to the I mean societal pressure because there is a particular way you know people feel we should look like that. Oh, this is the figure eight. We should mm-hmm. have black tummies. Oh, yeah. We should have you know this is what. But the point is, everybody will be boring actually if you all look the same. Yeah, that's what I feel. And that is why God has created us differently. And you know so, the truth, ma'am. Yeah. The men have their preferences. And telling you, and telling you, <laughs> some of them you give them the skinny ones. They say, they, oh no, my no, no, goodness, no, 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 no way. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even imagine me, but my hobby actually is there. You know, slim girls. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, where would you even hold? <laughs> <That's old. laughs> I will laugh and laugh. You know, you know that, and that's the truth. And, and that is how our God is actually mm-hmm. dynamic. Yeah. He has made people different. After pregnancy, one or two, three, you feel that oh, my, my tummy is really big. There are things you could do, exercises you could do, diet you could go on that will bring it down. Those are still okay. But when you are trying to look like somebody else, then there is something wrong. Yes. Something is actually wrong. And you want people to accept. You have you know, those yeah, just want to be Yes, just want to be like the models. You, you, are, you want to turn yourself into who God has not made you to be. Mm-hmm. Then there's something wrong. That's what people do on this enlargement of uh, different parts of the body, change their face, facial structure, and just want to look, it is a sign of something is missing, yes. something is wrong. They are looking for acceptance. So we don't have to feel good about yourself. If you are created as a, you know, you have big bones and you have big body, feel, you can be bold and beautiful and big and beautiful. Yes. You package yourself, look mm-hmm. for the right clothes to wear that fills your, you know, stature and everything. And you can need, like I said, to work on yourself in a particular area. Mm-hmm. Yes, so that you, you your self-esteem, but not to the point where you are trying to become someone else. That's what we are just saying. So that's my own view about it. Sir. We will always be under pressure because of what people see on I know TV, that. on the social media. Yes. You know, the pressure is always around us. But even with that, we just know that just work on yourself, accept who you are, who God has made you to be. Work on yourself, look good, and you know, feel happy, and just you know, Enjoy your confidence and uh, the confident woman you are, but do not be under pressure to please anyone or to be humble. God has not created you. Yeah, awesome. It's been an incredibly informative session, and we definitely need this break to soak in all that we have learned from Mrs. Atimuke Smith. This is Mama, where you live, love, learn, and laugh. Woman, there's only one life to live, and you should live it well. What do you think, ma'am? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, I, I, I can't do without it. That's what I tell myself every day. I have only one life to live. I've got to enjoy myself. <laughs> Where am I? Tip? But I'm, but I'm still discovering myself, so I must live it well and enjoy myself. So every woman out there, you wake up every day with a with that voice in your head, telling yourself, "I'm going to make it. I'll do well." And this is one life I have that God has given me as a gift. You must enjoy it while it lasts. Wow, praise God for that, ma'am. I want us to talk about our children in the next few minutes. It's important that we give attention to them and uh, mold them at this season when it's easier to do that. Uh, So how do we recognize a child with a low self-esteem? Is it the same with adults? At times, you know, it could go both. It could be on two extremes. Some children could withdraw into themselves. They just say that they don't mix with other children. They always, if you ask them questions, they can't look at you straight, they're always looking down. They are not happy, they look sad. Those are signs that we should look out for. Or a vibrant child that used to be vibrant, I just discovered that they always, always, nowadays, he doesn't want to meet with his friends, doesn't want to go out, doesn't want to, you know, you know and communicate with other people. And there's something wrong, we need to look at that. Then it goes to the other extreme. Where we have you know, like teenagers that will go into you know, abuse, like um, 
all this uh, drug abuse now that we hear here and there, those are the causes. Children that do that, definitely something is missing and they are trying to fill up the space by doing all this. Or sexual promiscuity, those are signs of you know, um, there's something wrong and they, they are trying to fill it up. You know. When you see um, women that so young children or women that subject themselves to abuse, they feel that this person is doing them a favor by loving them. You know, but it was just ridiculous to think that things like that would happen. I mean, what, what can you say to a lady who's listening right now and finds herself in that situation? She is a lot of work because a lot of things have gone wrong for a girl to get to that point. I have a group that we discovered yesterday about those who do an entire marriage and live with their boyfriends and everything, they cook for them, and all sorts. You know, I just think when we live like that, we think is able to find herself. I think it's just about self-discovery. When a woman does not even know who you are, that's what makes you to subject yourself to such situations. Where somebody will be abusing you, beating you, and you still think, call that love. <laughs> Something is wrong. Yes. Yeah, something is definitely wrong. And then it also boils down to our parental upbringing. Yes. Parents are the ones who work. Because for a, ch a child or a lady to see, be, I mean, Somebody beating you every day and you still stay in that relationship shows to you that the person lacks, doesn't even know who she is, doesn't understand, just feel the oh, and he's doing me a favor by loving me. That's what they feel, most of them, when you see this, they say, ah, he's doing me a favor, but they just have that feeling of, oh, he's doing me a favor by loving me, which is not so. Understanding that you are, you God made you special, you are special, is very important, and those, those, those who can drum that your children are parents, you make your child to know that you are special. Nobody should treat you anyhow. When you are saying no, let them know it's no. Have a voice of your own. And then also helping them to connect with God at a tender age. Yes, so that's because it. Because those are the things that will build esteem to them. Understanding their relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Working with God. When they are able to do that at early age, they know they don't have to subject themselves to anything. Whatever the word of God says about them is who they are. And whoever is painting anything different is not what God has created them to be. So that helps them to make good choices as they grow up. You know what to, you know, the right of the right type of association to people. So I think parents and we have, we have a lot of work to do in this area to help our girls to know who they are. So when we are bringing up our children, we must work so much on self discovery. Help them to know that they they hold themselves that one thing to find who they are. When you're able to find yourself and find your voice, you make it helps you to make good choices because you know this is me. And this is what God has created me to be there. You look at the choices. Does it, does this, does what I'm trying to do, I mean, does it correlate to the values I have? It does not go. So when it is against your values, you know, I won't go in that direction. But when people, children don't have that, they grow up to see that everything is acceptable, everything that comes my way is, you know, somebody is doing me people by loving me. Or they even lack parental love. Parents have not shown them the way they are going. Their fathers are not there. Or the fathers have always abused their parents when they were growing up. They just feel, oh, maybe it's enough. That's okay. And his mom was, I mean, managing it. Then I'm, I can also manage it. So those are things we need. They look at and they feel that, okay, it's a standard. It's okay. Which is not. So we need to keep teaching them the right values. Helping them to know that they need to find who they are in God. When they're able to do that, it helps them to, I mean, each one of them to make good decisions. So I think... Parents, everything boils down to parents. To parents, you know, so parents, very, very. There's no way around it, because that's where it starts from. When a child is giving right values, you find out that they are even when they miss it, they could miss it at times. Yes. Even with the right values, yes. right, they miss it at yes. times. But, but you find that they find they the way back, back yes, because it. they've been giving the right values. They, could, yeah, the they could miss go. it maybe because of wrong association and mm. things like that. But in that, because they have been, they've been something has been planted. They will always get back. To the they always find their way back. So parenting cannot be right advice. We need to do our job as parents. And unfortunately, the society we are now, parents are with everybody looking for money. Yes. How to survive. So Absence. we are all in survival mode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How to survive. That's what we are all looking for, you know. And by the end of the day, we are trying to survive because of the children. Mm -hmm. We are trying to look for money for school fees, for this, for that. But at the end of the day, these children they are you know, running around for they are missing the moments with them. And then by the time you finish looking for the money, you are telling them the you moments that, that, that And yes. then there is nothing you can do. And then all the pieces of the broken pieces that you left, you still be one of the people that will come and pick up the pieces eventually. So we need to find a way of balancing it and making sure that they are 
if we are, we are raising women, let us raise our daughters. Let them be total women that have discovered women that can stand on their own. Because at least some of us are, um, I mean, this generation is actually different from ours. When we were growing up, we went through a lot of hardship. And I know how it was. Money, it's not as easy now that you just go to school, your parents just pay school fees. So it was not that like easy. We yeah, did so many things to make yeah, sure so we got to where we are. But now, you know, children, some of the children at least, on an average level, find it easy to do their parents' pay school fees and need. And we still have those who go through our time. And you actually, in this generation, those who go through the tough times always actually come out better because they face a lot of you know, issues and they struggle through life. And so, every, all the areas of this life needs to be balanced as parents. That is a lot of work on parents. We have a lot of work to do, balancing everything teaching the right value, spending time with them, engaging them, it's a lot of work. And God will help us to be able to reach out yeah, to the standard. Yeah. It's a lot of work. That's you know, Ma, I t as you spoke, I you just kept coming to me. I wanted to actually move on to the next question, but I still feel like there's probably a girl who's crying for help oh, yeah. secretly. You know, perhaps uh, she's from a broken home, like you said, and there's really nobody to run to. So what, what does she do? I know because sometimes uh, I've met a few of them who are uh, seems like they are the mercy, you know, of the yeah. guy. Maybe that's even all she has. Maybe she doesn't even have a place yes, of her I own. Know, I know, I yeah, you know. So in those kind of situation, what? So what do I do? I, I always tell people that it's not an excuse to subject yourself to such things. Yeah. I think there are people that are actually waiting for help. Because we always feel, oh, I'm on my own, there's nobody to help. There are actually people waiting to help. There are people that, there are homes that can take you in. We, we need to search for them. We need to, you know, there are mentors that can mentor you, such girls. If you are, if you gravitate to work the right people, you find mentors that can. I, I've kept a few of my own house over the years. I, I've met some of them often, some of them so had to remove them from living with a you know, living with a man when I met them and we removed them because they felt they didn't have a choice but to leave because at least the guy would be feeding them and some of them would be abused while doing that, would be raped while doing that. So we need to rescue them. So I think such ladies need to look out for you know, something positive. Thank you so very much Ma I know that some people are listening right now and the Lord is touching their hearts. Yes. Okay so uh, whichever way if you're that woman, if you're that girl, that teenage girl, that adolescent who's uh, going through that season right now and you don't know what to do, please, you can send us an email, mamang18 at gmail.com. Let's help you. Let's fix you up somewhere. Let's find a way of, you know, supporting you. And if you're that person who right now you feel like uh, the, you're the one that uh, Mrs. Smith is talking about, the Lord is touching your heart to do something with regards to helping and you really don't know what to do or how to go about it, please send us an email also. Let's connect you, you know, uh, with the people who can support you and who can encourage you or perhaps even show you how to go about the dreams that God has put in your heart. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you so much, Mr. Tino. Okay, so um, now as we begin to... Uh, round up now what um, how can a woman who's been battered and beaten in life build her self-esteem you know somebody who's uh, been a rape victim uh, gone through a divorce physical or verbal abuse how can she pick uh, the pieces of her life uh, back I, I, together yeah, I think you, that person will need an external intervention Changing the right and finding the right association first and foremost is important. Finding people that can mentor, that can counsel. But it's already something that is happening to you. But so, so an external help is needed. Someone that can counsel. You need to find the spiritual help. That can, you need know, like a pastor or like a counselor that can help to you. Because she, such person needs emotional healing, physical healing. So many things that gone wrong. So. It's not something that can just be done. You can't just walk into it and walk out by yourself. So it's like someone that's is, is, is already falling into a well and you want to come out. Somebody needs to pull you out of the well. So I think the person needs to connect with a mentor or somebody. Cry out because even before you can be helped, you need to cry out. Because if somebody is not, you know, you are not voicing out that you are going through this, 
a few people might not even know what you're doing because women hide a lot of these things in our church. Mm. They cover up with makeup, they don't even know. They are beating, they cover it with makeup so that you don't know. They lie that they fail and you know, so many things like that. It's going on. So, help cannot come once the person that wants to be helped is ready to be helped. Because so, a lot of people cover things up. They are not happy in their marriages. They will not say it out. They will not be known. But we need them to speak out, to voice. That's the first step. When you need help, well, the way to show you really need help is to voice out, to say it out, to, to the right people. This year, to drive people. I need help, please help me. You know. And um, the organization that also, apart from even spiritual organizations that are interested in being abusive yes. and in helping ab- abusive women, they even do to get to the point of getting them out of the situation. They are in a denial stage. When you know mm. something, you are yeah, denying it. Right. Even when people see it and you deny it, mm-hmm. you, know, you could be in denial and think, oh, there's, it, it will be okay. Everything will be okay. And that's why people die in the relationship. Yes. People commit suicide, people die. Because they don't own up to what they are going through. So voicing out is the first thing. Be bold to voice out what you are going through to the right people. Whether you're pastors or you know, people that can counsel laws, you know, that can help. And then you also be ready to you know take whatever advice you are giving. So those are ways by which healing can go. So I think that's the best way we can be about it. And then people should also look out to help him all these abusing people. We should try our best to you know. When we see signs of people going through abuse, we shouldn't turn the other turn and hide the other way. We should try and see what we can do to arrest the situation. So I think that's the part. So what's in us is but they must always see because we can't go to them and if somebody is not ready to be helped, then yeah, you can't help them. That's 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 you can. That's so it. that's the first way to win. What's in us and ready to take whatever help is being offered. Thank you so much, Ma. So on a final note, uh, can you give a, a word to um, women in general? Yeah. Um, I, I, I would just like to say that as for, from what we've been discussing this morning, I believe that it is time, this, even this season we are in is for women, it's our time. Because the spotlight is on us. Because so many things are happening for us and then plus government, plus, you know, every, every level. Every spotlight is on us, and we need to step into our role to be who God has created us to be. I would like to advise that every woman find who you are. Self discovery is, is, is a continuous process. It's not something you do one day and stop. It's something you do at every stage, as a teenager, as a young single, as a young you know, Every you keep discovering yourself because that's how God has made us. There's so much inside of us, so much gift He has put inside of us that will add to your life and as you add to your life, it adds to the life of your children as you build yourself with good people around you. You get better as you get better. When you know that we are special in God's program, women are special in God's program. So that is why we cannot afford to sit sit back. We must take the front row because God has made us life bearers. God has made us in God. He has made us solution carriers. So we need to keep pushing it until we get to the end of our journey. Amen. Wow, Mama, I'm sure you agree with me that this has been a really, really beautiful time in the last um, few minutes. The truth is, if you can't remember anything else, never forget you're not a problem, you're not a liability, you are a solution carrier. That's who you are. Mama, it's time to love, to live, to learn, and to laugh. This is your season. This is your time. Thank you for listening to this beautiful program. And I want to appreciate you, Mrs. Tino Smith. Thank, thank you so you. much <laughs> for you. coming and for bearing your heart thank and you know speaking, uh, you know, from that wealth of wisdom. We're so grateful. The Lord bless you, ma, in Jesus' name. Okay, so if you have any questions or comments, uh, kindly reach us on momang18 at gmail.com and um, at momang18 on Instagram, at momang18 on Twitter. And you can listen to Wells Radio by downloading the app on your Android and iOS devices. Go to Google Play Store and search Wells Radio. Download and install the app and you'll be able to listen to us. Now listen to Wells Radio via TuneIn, Streamer, and our website www.wellsradio.com. Follow and like Wells Radio on Twitter and Instagram at Wells Radio and on Facebook at Wells Radio Online. Don't forget, Mama, if this program has blessed you, please let somebody else know about it. Okay, spread the word. 
and let's be blessed together. And remember, till next time, make sure you live, love, learn, and laugh. My name is Tolu Aladisomi. Have a beautiful season.